Hey there, welcome back to my channel. It's springtime here in Botswana, which feels so strange to say in September. We are enjoying the warmer weather and everything is in bloom. However, my kids are missing the fall flavors of the states, which is why I'm excited to share with you all the pumpkin spice recipes we've been enjoying over the last few weeks. I haven't been able to find pumpkin pie spice, but I was able to make my own. As always, I'll list all the ingredients down below. I also had to make my own pumpkin puree, which was especially easy with this bag of fresh cut pumpkin. People here in Botswana actually eat a lot of squash, including pumpkin, just not in pie form. Okay, now that I have my two main ingredients, we can jump right in. The first thing I wanted to make were these pumpkin energy bites. I have a recipe for energy bites similar to this that my kids love, so I thought a pumpkin version would be fun. This is super simple. Just mix everything in a bowl till well combined, adding more oats as needed. You want them to hold their shape, but you don't want them to be dry. Once you're happy with the consistency, add a little salt, then give it a taste. Adding a bit more salt, a little at a time, till it's to your liking. Once it's all mixed together and tasting good, cover it with plastic and pop it in the fridge for a bit. Once it was chilled, I used a half tablespoon measuring spoon and formed them into little balls. I placed each one in a mini muffin liner. You could also just place them on a sheet of parchment paper. My kids love to eat these from frozen. Using two separate dishes, I froze mine in a single layer. Once they are frozen, I moved them to an airtight container, double layered. This pumpkin butter turned out so good. Whip softened butter with honey, pumpkin, pumpkin pie spice, and a pinch of salt. I would love to be able to store this on my countertop, which is what I would have done in the States. However, with summer approaching and no central air, I think it's best for me to store it in the fridge. This butter goes especially well with fresh baked bread. I have an amazing bread recipe that's not sourdough. I'll be sharing soon, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss it. Speaking of bread, I used that same loaf to whip up some pumpkin pie spiced French toast. To a bowl, add eggs, cream, sweetened condensed milk, pumpkin pie spice, a splash of maple syrup. Don't forget the pumpkin like I almost did. Whisk all of that together and pour it over your bread. You could totally use slices from a store-bought loaf. That's what I usually use. Make sure all those pieces get covered and let them soak for at least 30 minutes. You could even soak them overnight, making breakfast that much simpler the next morning. I think this would make a really good French toast casserole also. That's definitely something I'm going to have to experiment with. This turned out so good. We topped them with some of that pumpkin butter. We didn't even use syrup. So this next recipe is for pumpkin spiced cold foam. It's absolutely delicious and it's what actually inspired that French toast recipe. Mix cream, sweetened condensed milk, pumpkin puree, and pumpkin pie spice together. And that's it. I brewed then chilled my kids some chai tea. I made myself some cold brew coffee. This is great for those of us living in a hotter climate but still want to indulge in a festive spiced drink. I added a little maple syrup for sweetness. This was so good I actually had to mix up some more pumpkin pie spice. These last two recipes don't require any pumpkin or pumpkin spice, but they're definitely fall related. All you need is sugar, butter, cream, and salt. No corn syrup or candy thermometer required. This was my first time making caramel this way, so I wanted to share what I learned. Start by adding a quarter cup of sugar to your pan. Keep stirring till it melts completely. This took a while, but you really need to stand there watching and stirring so it doesn't burn. You're going to continue that process adding a quarter cup of sugar at a time and list some help if you can. This was kind of a long process. I don't like caramel, but I love candy milk. Once all that sugar is melted in, you're going to slowly add the cream. Be careful, it's going to steam and you don't want to burn yourself. Once that cream is all stirred in, add the butter. Keep stirring till everything is melted together and smooth. That's it for the caramel. Turn off the heat and give it plenty of time to cool. While you're waiting, you can prepare your apples. 
Everything we read online said to give the apples a quick soak in boiling water to remove the waxy coating. We made sure to dry them really well with the cloth afterwards to ensure the coating was completely gone. Before you start dipping your apples, be sure you've given the caramel plenty of time to cool. When we started, it was still so warm that it wouldn't stick to the apples. Next time, I'm probably going to give it close to an hour to cool. After a few caramel apple fails, we decided to wait a bit longer and they started turning out much better. Okay guys, I was hesitant about this last recipe, but when my kids saw these homemade slice and bake cookies, they got really excited. I've linked to the original recipe by its creator below. Definitely watch that video before you make these. This is a basic sugar cookie recipe. Once you've made the dough, you're going to separate about three fourths of a cup and color it orange. Then take out about one tablespoon and color that green. Now wrap each piece in plastic and let them chill in the fridge for no less than two hours. After the dough has chilled, you can start rolling out that larger piece. Once everything is evenly rolled out to about a quarter of an inch, pop it back in the fridge. Then roll out your orange dough into a long cylinder. This is going to be your pumpkin. Once you've got an evenly rolled out cylinder shape, place it back on that cookie sheet and put it back in the fridge. You want to keep this dough chilled. Next, start rolling out the stem. Once the stem is rolled out, you can place your pumpkin cylinder into that first piece of rolled out dough. Gently push a skewer into the top of the pumpkin piece. This will give you more of a pumpkin shape and be a guide for that green stem. My dough kept getting soft, so I had to work fast, and I ended up placing my stem in sections. Now you're ready to wrap your pumpkin. The parchment paper really helped in this process. Once you get your pumpkin wrapped, cut off the excess dough. I used that parchment paper to tightly wrap my dough. Once it was wrapped, I threw it back in the fridge. I'm going to freeze this excess dough. We'll save it for a rainy day. The kids will have fun cutting out shapes. After about an hour, I took my slice and bake cookie dough out of the fridge and gently rolled it on a cutting board to ensure it was nice and round. Then I cut off the ends. I couldn't resist, I had to take a peek. Then I wrapped it back up in the parchment paper. I plan on baking these tomorrow, so I'm just going to leave them in the parchment. If you wrap them in plastic, they could hang out in the freezer for months. Here I am the next day ready to bake. I found I was able to slice these more evenly if I kind of chopped straight down from the top rather than saw at these cookies. There you have it, all the flavors of fall. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you would tap that subscribe button. Also, comment below your favorite flavor of fall. Until next week.